All right, so what I mentioned in a previous video was uh, I got myself a new radio here for my ham radio station here at the house. And some people have asked from watching some of my shorts, like show us what your setup is, tell us what your setup is, you know, let us see that 264 foot antenna, all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna give you a somewhat quick rundown of my system here. I just got this radio a few days ago, still kind of figuring it out and learning. Most of these HF radios all, for the most part, they do the same thing. Some have more features than others. Some have them named different things, but I'm really loving this new radio I got or transceiver that I got and that's doing excellent job. And um, I wanna share that with you right now. All right, so in some of my previous videos, I had a radio that's known as an ICOM. That's the brand, an ICOM 7300. I had it right here. You can probably see it in some of my shorts that I've had. Still have it. I want to use it as my parks on the air station primarily. I got it off the desk right now. So what I got now is this Yesu FTDX10, and I love this thing. It's freaking awesome. As you can see here, we got our radio, we got our VFO, we can do all the things. Got a bunch of buttons and dials and whatnot on there, but it's also got a DVID out so I can run what's on my screen here on a monitor, which is pretty cool. So I can see see all the little numbers a little better and stuff like that. It's really neat. You can uh, you can do a, a multi thing so I can see an oscilloscope. And I can see this audio here along with the signals. So these are all different signals of people talking here on 20 meters and then the waterfall that's coming down below it. So for instance, if I turn the volume up and I'm in upper sideband. So if I go right here to the edge of that transmission, And then we can hear the guy talking. There's somebody off frequency there. I can dig in closer, see that. Oh, it went all the way over there. All right, so let me go back over here. I appreciate you checking in. Guests are always welcome. You don't have to be a member to participate with us. Of course, we're always looking for new members here. Have a great day, Joe, and good luck with the new answer. So, I can uh, I can go in you know, pretty close and then signal I can back out so that's the signal obviously you heard that guy that's his voice on an oscilloscope there's his signal strength right there there's a frequency I'm on. So I can see everything right here. I can run this 3D waterfall that Yesu has or band scope. So these are the transmissions versus the other way. It's kind of cool. I don't know if I 100% like that. Kind of like this way a little better where I can see what I'm doing here. But anyway, so I got that up for two meters and 70 centimeters, local communications to uh, repeaters and things like that, simplex and all. I've got my, this here is a ICOM 7100. This was my first HF VHF radio right here. So this does everything. This does HF, it does VHF, it does UHF, it does D-Star Digital, it does all the things. So if you want one radio, you look for an all mode, all, or some people call them a shack in the box radio. The 7100 is a pretty good one. A lot of people have these in their vehicle. You can put this under the seat. This is the radio body and this is the control head. You can mount this near the driver's area of the vehicle and run your radio, but your radio is literally under your seat. Pretty cool. So this was my very first radio. I'm gonna replace this at some point or um, just a dedicated VHF, UHF radio to go right here. May do the same ones that's in my trucks. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that or not. I might get something different, but uh, that's what I use for VHF, UHF. So there's a different antenna for this radio. And then I've got my Delta Loop, which is a 264 foot wire, Delta configuration wire is hooked to this. This right here is my, uh, is a external SWR and power meter. So what this does, get it down here where you can see a little better. So I can switch this to my HF radio or to my VHF UHF radio. And when I key the mic and talk, it will show my forward power going out the antenna, any reflected power I got in the SWR. I can explain that stuff in another video one day. So if you have any questions about SWR and stuff like that, 
Hit them up in the comments below. We'll talk about them in another video. Yeehaw. But I switched back and forth between my HF radio and my VHF UHF right there. This here's my QRZ page that I mentioned in another video. It's kind of a page where people can come that are talking to me on the radio and they can see my stuff and check out things on here. Thus, I can do the same for somebody else. So like I talked to, let's see, I talked to uh, these guys, this guy here. So I talked to this guy right here uh, yesterday in haiti it's a radio club in haiti so they got their pictures there so this was a special event station i think yeah special call for the haiti air ambulance service so i talked to somebody associated with that yesterday and then over here i got a program called ham radio deluxe and this is how i can do my logging so when i talk to somebody this is connected to my radios so whenever i change these frequencies here it also changes the frequency there you can see that so I don't have to worry about putting all that in my log and everything. So whatever frequency and band and mode I'm in on my radio, it automatically populates it here, the date and the time. So then what I do is I put the person's call sign right here and put our signal reports here and any other stuff I wanna put here. And when I hit enter, it comes over here into my log. So this is my log right here. And I messed up right there, I need to take that one off. But this is all the people that I've talked to over, let's see the last, few days so i can come over here and scroll you know this is all the people i've talked to so we've got uh haiti we got saint martin we got canada france spain micronesia barbados united states australia italy ukraine all over the place <laughs> so, it's really cool and that's some of that's digital mode ft8 and some of it's uh voice most of it's voice I'm, i like doing ft8 but i like i like getting on on there and talking with people Let's see what else oh my microphone i get a lot of people on the radio like man you must have an awesome microphone your audio is great what kind of microphone are you running this is just a 40 dollars microphone off amazon <laughs> so i got the cable that i need to connect xlr to my radio depending on your radio you need a specific cable to do that typically i got it on a boom arm as you can see so i can move it wherever to talk i've got a switch on the floor that i step on that keys the mic so like this mic here for my vhf uhf you push the button here and talk essentially doing the same thing but the button is on the floor where my foot is so i step on it and i talk into the microphone and i let off of it it's just like taking my thumb off the mic got headphones here for sometimes when i'm looking for that very weak station that i can barely hear and sometimes headphones help and that's pretty much this station right here. But a lot of you guys want to know about the antenna. So let's run outside and let's talk about the antenna real quick. But before we do that, let's just talk about vehicle stuff. So here I have a VHF UHF radio here in the vehicle. It's just the head and I got it on a phone mount in my truck. This is an ICOM 5100. Body of the radio is under the passenger seat. This is what I use when I'm traveling to talk to repeaters and talk to people on the road and whatnot similar to CB, except using the amateur radio bands and repeaters. Yeehaw. The antenna for that is right here. Just simple lip mount on the truck. And this is what my voice and receiving and all is coming out of. And then I've got an identical setup on my other truck. So now we're gonna go outside, we're gonna check out the antenna system that I just recently changed a few weeks ago with the help of some other ham radio buddies. So before I had this tower that I'm fixing to show you, I just had this antenna up in pine trees. You don't need an antenna tower to do what I'm fixing to show you, okay? And you don't have to have all that elaborate equipment if you wanna call that elaborate, which mine is nowhere near what some people's are, but you know, it's kind of middle of the road. You don't need it. You don't even need that. Okay. I've been working up to this over five years. Okay. To start off with, all I had was that ICOM 7100 that I showed you and a Wolf River coil antenna that you can see in my first uh, Parks on the Air video. That's like a year old. If you want to go back and check that or we'll link it somewhere in here. Okay. That's all I had. That's all you need. You don't need to do what I'm doing right now to do this. Okay. This is graduating and I'm, I still got a lot more to do. But here is my antenna setup. Got that tower right there. It goes up. And if I could zoom, I would, but I can't. So at the very top of that, so that's about, that's 45 feet. 
At the very top, I got a 17 foot white antenna that's straight up in the air, vertical, see it? So that antenna goes to the 7100. That's my two meter and 70 centimeter VHF, UHF antenna. So when I'm talking on that radio, that's going in and out of that white antenna. You see that little black box right there? That's a ballon, okay? It's a little transformer, ballon, balanced to unbalanced. So there's a little transformer and the coax is coming down and going in and going to my HF radio, the new Yesu. You'll see a wire going this way, and then you'll see a wire going this way. My antenna is one wire in the shape of a triangle, delta loop. It's a loop, so it starts there, goes out, comes back, and ends back at the ballon. So it's a loop, and it's in the shape of a triangle, so it's a delta loop. From this end all the way around and back to this end again is 264 feet, which allows me, some people call this an 80 meter loop. So I can talk on the 80 meter band all the way up the six meter band. This used to be up in that pine tree right there before I had the tower and it worked amazing. It worked just as good as it is in the tower. The only real reason why I got the tower is I've always wanted one. And eventually I'm gonna put a big antenna up there on a rotator so I can rotate things. But now I've got a two meter antenna way up there. So the very tip of that antenna is, see if that's 45 foot, 62 foot up in the air. So the tip of that antenna is 62 foot up. And then I've got pulleys. I got standoffs up there with ropes tied to it. I got two of them. One that's got the current delta loop on it. And then one that doesn't have anything on it. And rope coming down right here so so this rope right here is going up to a pulley that my antenna is on so if i need to get my antenna down i just let it down with the rope this is the coax going up to it this is the coax going to the the two meter or the uhf vhf and then this is a rope that's going up to the other pulley and back down so if i want to make or test another antenna, wire type antenna. I can attach it to this rope, grab this side right here and hoist that antenna up to the position that I want it to be, about 40 feet. Then the two antenna coaxes come down and I've got them going in through this plate. The two antennas coming to the plate here. This here is my VHF UHF connection. This is my HF connection. This plate is grounded to the tower. The tower is grounded to ground rods in the ground and all the way around the concrete here for lightning protection. Some of you guys know about this stuff are probably screaming, man, you ain't got no lightning protectors for the coax connection. You ain't got this. I ain't got there yet. When I'm not on the radio, I, uns I unscrew everything <laughs> for right now. But did all this myself, got the tower up with the help of some friends, dug the hole myself by hand. It's a four foot deep by four foot wide hole. So the concrete that's sticking up out of the ground that you see right there isn't all the concrete. It comes out another three and a half ish, -ish feet all the way around it. So it's a big slab of concrete in there, four foot deep. Then I got ground rods all out here with one continuous copper wire going all the way around right here. And then I've got it bracketed, got it bracketed up there to the building so there's no guy wires or anything on it if i go up i may go up another 10 or 20 feet one day i do have a piece right there that i was going to put on there but i decided to leave it where it's at for now then i'll i'll do some guy wires as well but right now it's good freestanding with just it being supported by the building and obviously the concrete on the ground so let me show you how i got the other two ends of the antenna done and we'll wrap this up some of you too might be studying well, what about your station ground and all this stuff let's not get into the ground conversation you probably already know if you're asking those questions the wide opinions and variety of grounding systems are i'm still trying to understand and confirm my belief in it let's face it guys many of us do it different many of us either believe what arrl says or believes what electrical code says or we don't does it make one any better than another absolutely not are any of us truly protected who knows we'll leave the grounding talk for another video. Right now, my station is not grounded outside of it being grounded through the electrical system, my power supply with the wiring of the building, which I know is 100% correct and done right and overdone because I did it. Anyway, here's my two ends 
of the antenna. So the sun is over here, so I doubt you guys are gonna be able to see this. Probably too much glare. But anyway, right here is the wire coming from the left side of the tower, and it goes through an insulator, and now it's going across here. Maybe you'll see it now because we're away from the sun. There's a wire going over here. So this is the bottom of the triangle, if you want to call it that. And right there, if you can see it, is the insulator. And I've just got some um, rapid rope tied to the insulator, it's thrown over a tree and down and tied off to a tree. Same thing on the other side. So this is the other corner of the triangle going back to the antenna. And that whole thing is roughly 40-ish feet up horizontal. And it's all over my metal roof of my building. And uh, it works great. It works absolutely freaking awesome. The receive capability of that antenna is ridiculous. I used to have an in-fed half wave, about the same height up, blows that out of the water. I have talked all over the world on this thing. Very low noise level. I can hear very well with that antenna. I recommend if you've got the space. So each leg of that triangle is 88 feet. So 88, 88, and 88. You don't have to do it in a triangle. It's recommended to do it in that if you can, but there's plenty of people that have that antenna design and they got it in triangles or they got it in whatever configuration they can get it up in the air just by throwing you know, line up over trees or whatever. That's my setup currently. I'm sure things are going to change here soon, but I'm really enjoying the Yaesu FT-DX10. I've had the 7300, which I still have. I have a FT-DX3000, which I don't think, I'd, I've never done a video on the 3000, but excellent radio. They don't make it anymore. If you can find one at a deal and get one, I'd recommend getting one. It's a really, really, really good radio, but I wanted to try to the FTDX10, and I missed having the graphics and the waterfall and all that stuff. The 3000 don't have that. There's a lot of things that 3000 is good at. 3000's got three antenna ports where that's got one. So I could run two HF antennas, transmit and receive, and switch between the two just with the put push of a button and it's got a dedicated receive only antenna i think it's receive only it may be transmit too i can't remember but definitely receive so you can have a huge antenna like a loop like that on the ground or just i know a buddy that's got a antenna on his receive side that's just strong through the woods that's his receive antenna so he, he he listens on that antenna and he transmits on different antennas uh you can't do that with this radio unless you've got a switch an external switch and you have to physically switch around or on that radio but that's an amazing radio the receive is great on the 3000 i hooked this up to a switch with, where i could switch between the radios while i was listening to somebody the receive on that ftdx 10 blows that 3000 out of the water and that's no filtering, that's no DNR, that's, that's just straight incoming receive. So I'm enjoying ham radio, folks, and I think you could too. Again, you don't have to spend metric tons of money to do this. This is a progression of mine over the last five years, <laughs> okay? I enjoyed ham radio just as much when I didn't have that radio and the monitors and all that stuff. So get you a small rig, go out to a park, do parks on the air, learn how to set up emergency comms just out of a bag in your vehicle. If you want to check out my video, we'll post it somewhere in the links or whatever from a year ago when I um, did my first ham radio video on YouTube. And maybe you'll learn something there. All right. Again, if you want to learn ham radio, I suggest you check out hamradioprep.com. I don't get paid a single dime for letting you guys know this. I just know it works because I used it. That's what I used to study and take my practice test before I took my official testing. It's great. Go to hamradioprep.com. If you decide to purchase their service, use code BATTLEBOX at checkout. They'll give you 10% off whatever deals they're running currently. So very good uh, thing. And it's one-time pay and you can use it indefinitely. So really, really good thing to do there at hamradioprep.com. All right, so that's my station currently, folks. If you got any questions, if you want any demos or anything like that, I'll do that if you guys really want to see that. Might be doing a live stream for too long and me just playing on the radio. And uh, if you got any questions, if I know the answers, I'll answer them. If uh, I don't, I'll find out the answer or point you to somebody that's got the answer. Good deal. Love you, mean it. See you guys on the next video. Yeehaw.